Hi, my name is Clementine and welcome to the PNC podcast. Today we have Wado Prana, Aboriginal health team member and former West Coast and Port Adelaide superstar Shane Bond. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. No, no thank you for inviting me out. And, uh, it's a fantastic setup you, you have here at your school. Thank you. So moving into the first question, what role do you have supporting Aboriginal people? Yeah, well, like you said, I work at Water Perina Health. I've been in the uh, health for a number of years. Um, my role, I do a lot of programs, community engagement, bring uh, a lot of the community in to get health checked and check their health, which is uh, very important for our culture. Obviously, we're still the uh, our our culture is still the youngest living culture in the world, and we're working to uh, improve that. Yeah. Why do you enjoy your role? Uh, I love my role because I get to work with my mob and um, I love seeing people improve their health, uh, especially the older community. I do a lot of work with the older community and uh, it's great to see them looking after themselves. Obviously with chronic illnesses, it's very important in our culture to maintain that and get on top of it, but I just love working with my mob. That's good. What service do Aboriginal primary health offer to the com- to the community? Good question, very good question. Um at our service, we have um, look, we have uh, numerous uh, things we do with our mob. We uh, have doctors, we have podiatry, people that look after their feet. We have social workers, look after the clients with the numerous issues. We also do um, health programs that I run. We do a, an aquatherapy program, which the elderly can come in and uh, do non-weight bearing exercises. Um, we have OT workers there that work with the young kids on speech. Um, we cover a holistic, a lot of lot of different issues with, 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 with health, which I uh, really enjoy. Good point. You are caped as the first player to play for Port Power. Being such a proud club, how does this make you feel? No, there was very exciting times, obviously, when Port... Port Adelaide turned into Port Power, which they are Port Adelaide and always will be Port Adelaide now. Um, obviously, I grew up playing football there when I was a young guy and uh, played in the underage, the underage competition. And then I got drafted by the Eagles and went over there for three years. But to come back and uh, play in the first year, which they were formed, was uh, I'm very proud of. And uh, no, they were exciting times. This may be a hard question, but who is the best player you have played with or against? Yeah, no, very good question. Um, obviously, in the uh, early 90s, there were a lot of good players running around. At the Eagles, I uh, used to enjoy playing with Peter Matera. He was a fantastic player. Um, and then uh, back at Port Adelaide, I'm, I'm pretty biased. I always say Gavin Wanganin was the uh, best player I played with. Um so I was lucky to play with a lot of good players. Was he a nice player? Yeah, no, very fair player. Um, could play in numerous positions. Um, put him anywhere on the ground and uh, he uh, normally done a very good job. And Peter Maturin used to play on the wing. Uh, he won uh, Norm Smith medal and won a couple of premierships as well. And both of them are Aboriginal players. So um, I was lucky enough to play with the... Uh, a lot of good Aboriginal players in my time um, and ones that I looked up to. So, no, very good players. Would you say it was a nice person as well? Very good person. Yeah, both of them are very stand-up guys and good Aboriginal people who are very, um, love their culture and proud of their Aboriginality. Yep. As you have played at the elite level, what personal abilities do you think you need to have? Well, I think to... Um, Achieve, um, or, or sh- when you strive to a, to play at the uh, best in anything you want to do, whether that be sport or academically, I reckon you need um, well, you need to persevere and uh, a lot of belief, and um, yeah, just believe in yourself and don't let anyone say that you can't do it, because when people say you can't do it, it should make you strive even more to achieve. 
So if you want to achieve something in life, believe you can do it. And if you believe in new practice, you can do it. I remember when I was a kid, my dream was to play an AFL premiership. And I was lucky enough that I got to do that. And that was one of the things that I wanted to do. And uh, was in the right time at the right place. So believe in yourself and never let anyone say that you can't because you can. Yeah. What is one of the strategies you use to keep yourself focused, being the best that you can? Yeah, good question. Um, obviously, being a professional sportsman, um, you had to um, obviously eat healthy because you uh, and uh, look after your body. Um, growing up, I had a lot of cousins and a lot of friends that used to go out and probably. Uh, do the do like enjoy themselves on weekends so I had to kind of stay in and make sure that I got my sleep and uh, ate the right foods fruit and veg and looked after my body um so sacrifices so if you want to achieve something like if you want to do something in academically you want to be something whether it be a doctor or be whatever what do you got to do you got to study don't you so when your friends are out playing you got to make sure that you can you can play but you got to make sacrifices so Sacrifice to achieve. That's one of my beliefs. Who were your mentors? Well, I'd say my mum and dad and my grandpa. I was lucky that I had had my brother. Lucky that I had good parents that uh, were very, um, were always there for me and uh, ran me to training and and, uh, believed in in my sporting ability and told me that what's right and wrong. But it doesn't have to be your parents, it can be your brother, it can be your cousin, it can be your grandpa. You can have someone in your life that you can look after, look up to and respect, but mine was probably my parents. How did they help and support you? Well, they ran me to training because I played numerous sports when I was younger. I played basketball, cricket, all athletics, I did a lot and my parents were always there to run me to training and pick me up, feed me. So I had good good support in that area. Um So, yeah, always be thankful for your parents. What made you choose football? Like you said that you had done a lot of sports originally, but what kind of led you towards the path of doing footy? Uh, Probably um, football uh, probably chose itself because I got selected um, playing football in underage state teams and then I went on to play for Port Adelaide in the under-15s and 17s and so... Football kind of chose chose me. Like football chose me, um, and obviously my brother played, and my cousin Gavin. I played with him at Salisbury North, and um, so football kind of chose itself for me. Were you sure about it being the right choice, or were you a bit skeptical, or did you just go for it? Uh, no, I just kind of went for it. I mean, I love tennis and I love golf as well when I was younger, but um, yeah. football kind of chose. I got selected, and like I said, in those state teams and. Port Adelaide, so football kind of took over. Yeah. We re- read that you mm. kicked Port Adelaide's third goal in the AFL. Can you describe what that felt like? Um, very exciting. I remember the first game um, we played at the MCG against Collingwood. Uh, very exciting to play in the first team. To be honest, I can't remember kicking the third goal. Um, I remember us getting... Uh, uh, beaten very well by Collingwood, but um, to play in Port's first ever game, it was very exciting times, and we had a very young side, and that first year, we were one game out of making the final, so I think we'd done very well, and um, no, very exciting times. You had also played against your brother, Troy, in several showdowns. How did that feel, and who were your mob barracking for? Yeah, very good question. Um, obviously, my parents, uh, it was difficult for them uh, playing against each other, but I suppose they just wanted Troy and myself to play well. Um, also very difficult because when we played the Crows, I seemed to stand Troy, which made it probably a little harder, but Troy and me are pretty relaxed, easygoing guys, so um, we didn't take it uh, too serious. It's a game. We tried our best on the day, and uh, some of the games he got the better of me, and some of the games... Uh, we won, so um, no exciting times and times I look back out, back on with uh, happy happy memories. 
Do you have a lot of respect for the Crows? Uh, yeah, you got to respect the opposition. I do respect the Crows. Um, doesn't mean I ever support them. <laughs> um, <laughs> respect them, yeah. When you see this photo, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Yeah, um, no, that photo um, brings back good memories, actually. Um, when I first see the photo, I remember Troy kicked a goal on me to win the game in, in, in the wet. So, um, But uh, when I seen his face, he came up to me after and he, he, he was smiling. I couldn't, couldn't do nothing back but smile and... Um, no, they were good memories, um, and obviously that photo now is etched on the showdown um, shield, which is uh, no, it was good for my family to, and my, especially my daughters. You never really got to see me play footy, so it brings back a few memories when I played. So, good times. Who was a better player? Would you say you or your brother? <laughs> well, I'd like to say that we both enjoyed the game. I, I think Troy was. Um, probably a little bit more exciting than when I was. He was the, the forward and the goal kicker, so Troy will say he was a bit more skillful. But uh, no, we just enjoyed the game. That's good. Eva? Your footy career was cut short by injury. What was life like after footy? Yeah, no, very good question. Um, yeah, back when I was young, we I suppose we didn't have what the club's got now, where they got... Um, like Aboriginal uh, welfare workers and people looking after you outside the game. Uh, they were just starting that off back then. Um, yeah, I, I finished when I was 25, so um, I still had a lot of, lot of career left. Um, yeah, I, I suppose through injury it's made it a bit harder, um, obviously with my knee. But um, uh, no, I went on to work straight away. I went on to work in, in the health service and... Uh, um, got on with my life. Um, yeah, you miss obviously you miss the camaraderie and you miss the sport because everyone loves playing sport. But um, that's why it's very important to study and um, get an education because if you have um, aspirations to play sport, it doesn't last forever. So you have, need to have something to fall back on. Yeah, good point. One of our school's values is resilience. What does resilience mean to you? Very good question too. Um, not giving up, believing in yourself. Um, you might get knocked back once, twice, or three times if you if you're trying to make a sports team or you, you you're studying for something. But never give up because if you believe, you'll make it. And um, yeah, resilience is just keep trying. Could you give an example of when you use resilience in your life? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, well, sport. Um, I, I copped a lot of injuries, hamstring injuries, a lot of injuries throughout my career, and uh, there were times when you think, "Why?" But um, you, you keep going, keep doing the rehab, keep uh, getting your body right, and uh, yeah, you come back and you play again. Yeah, yeah. What skills and abilities do you think young students like us need to work on to have a successful career in the future? Um, I think resilience is, is, is important at a young age and, and, and also learning that you are going to get knocked back. There are going to be times where you know, life's, life's not easy. You're going to have rejections. You're not going to make, you're not going to make it or you're not going to get that job you want or you're yeah. not going to make the, t the sporting team that you, that you want to make. But, but if you believe in yourself and it's resilience, you will make it. Keep trying. Never give up because you're young. And uh, you you got plenty of time in life. And also talking, and I believe we do it a lot better now, where you can talk to your parents, you can talk to your friends, share your emotions, don't don't hold it in. And, uh, yeah, talk to people and let, let everyone know how you're feeling and how you're coping if you do get knocked back because that's what people are there for, to the support you. Do you wish that you knew that at a younger age? Yeah, I think all us old people think we could change a few things growing up and... As you get older, you get a little bit wiser and you you, you learn from your mistakes. But, um, yeah. What is the best thing about being a leader? Oh, I think um, for me, a lot of my leaders are my my, my parents and my granddad, who was a respected uh, Narunga elder. And um, to me, being a leader... You can. You don't have to lead by voice. You can lead by example. I think a lot of Aboriginal people, a lot of them, 
don't lead by voice, but you can lead by example by watching what they're doing. You know what I mean? There's also have good leaders to lead with voice, but you don't have to uh, be vocal to be a leader. Respect. Yeah. I think if you're respected, you're a leader. Your name is Mr Bond. What are some of your nicknames you have been given? I don't think I can say them on air. <laughs> 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 no, I'm joking. Um, well, obviously, Bondy, um, 007, James. We all know James Bond. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, old man. <laughs> I used to act like an old man when I was a kid. Um, <laughs> there's numerous nicknames, yeah. You were nominated by Wade, so who would you like to nominate for a future PNC podcast? Um, would you like to get my brother in? That would be good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we get Troy down here. You can talk to him. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'll nominate Troy. <laughs> Very good. So Shane, we want to thank you once again for coming into PNTV Studios, and thanks to all of the viewers for tuning in. PNC out. Fantastic.